Hey everybody. So in this video I want to talk about what does living in the now mean and a reminder or an affirmation how to live in the now better. So what I want to say is living in the now means different things to different people totally. I know this from my own personal experience from what I used to think and how also other teachers and book authors describe it as. So I want to make this video from someone, me, who I consider and have been told by a few different energy sensitive people who's a person who's very well balanced and keep doing whatever I am doing. I'm not an extremist, I'm not a fanatic, I'm not stuck in my upper chakras and I'm not stuck in my bottom chakras. I'm mixing them together and that's the, better, the best of life in my opinion. It's the integration, understanding, mixing, balancing, harmonizing and functioning of all the chakras at the same time. The physical and the spiritual, living both awesomely, as awesome as possible anyway. I'm not saying my life is always awesome or anything, but um, living in the now, okay? How to describe this? I used to practice this every day for like three years or so or more, maybe three years, something like that. And five, three to five hours a day of being super mindful, inner stillness, spaciousness, quiet mind, aware, focus of what I was doing and every little, little detailed movement almost. And I was wild because <laughs> I was sick and I had nothing better to do. And this is a really interesting new area to explore that interested and excited me and brought me so much peace in a time that otherwise I would have could have suffered a lot. So, for me right now, there's a mixture. You don't want to live too much like in the now, and you don't want to live completely oblivious to the idea of the now either. So for me, it ties into what I said originally. It's like a mixture of physical and spiritual and upper chakras and bottom chakras. No chakra is better. Spiritual isn't better than physical and physical isn't better than spiritual. It's about mixing together masterfully or harmoniously and beautifully. And that's full spectrum holistic living. So, right now look around the place, okay? We're in a beautiful place. A lot of people are just rushing to the next point or destination like they're rushing but they're sort of oblivious to the the beauty or the simple ordinariness of their house even their workplace it doesn't have to be a beautiful place like this it could be just driving or traveling somewhere so for me living in the now means don't be too sticky to the last moment don't be stuck or attached to the future hope or expectation and don't be attached and stuck to clutching on to the last moment either or the last minute or hour or day or month or anything like that. So this ties in with the whole idea of impermanence and everything is changing. The only constant is change. When you can realize that life means to always loss of what's here now, always coming and going and changing. This exact moment, you lose it. Something new is always here. The river's moving, the bird sings, the sun changes, your body feels different, your body's changed like a billion parts on the inside, trillions. What that means is you don't cling and clutch onto the last thing you had as if that's where happiness is found, or peace. You're, it's, it means being open to what can come, and always being open to things that can go. So that means if you lose something that's important or nice for you, you don't get devastated and destroyed. This isn't about the extreme idea of, like, pretending everything has anything that 
has everything has like equal value um, to you or like everything makes you either happy or sad the same like you get hit by a car you're as happy as if you got given like a hug or a presence by your loved one like it's, I think some people might think this about maybe the word equanimity or equanimous possibly I'm not sure but that's what I thought equanimous meant but maybe I'm wrong about that but it's not about a pretending or a denial of your truth and your feelings but it's just about not being too sticky too attached that's as simple as that okay so it just means the blow is lessened and you're able to have generally more peace and happiness too because you're not sticky and attached and clinging on to stuff because your health, your looks, your hair, your mum, your dad, your sister, your brother your children, your things, your wealth everything will go and everything is always changing anyway so living in the now is about being not sticky just using my own wording like it's going to stop being sunny soon and I'm going to be in a new place but the idea is chill out don't get attached to this beach, this river in Coston in Canada I'm not even going to be in Coston in Canada or in Canada in another month and a half I'm going to be in Ireland probably but part of living in the moment is not being attached to the future either it's about not excessively thinking and worrying about the future and it's about not dwelling on the past so if something upsets you let's say 10 minutes ago or half an hour ago or a minute ago try let go of that living in the now is also because you're not attached as much the intention is to let go and to live in the now again and just refresh it's like a refresh button living in the now means refresh and it's also about not dwelling with the future so solve your be practical and do what you can do now but if there's nothing that you can do now about the future don't start worrying and getting all anxious about it and getting depressed it's about letting go and being freer like because you're not sticky and heavy by stickiness like like you're a bird and you don't have a whole lot of sticky stuff like honey or heavy molasses on your wings so and I hope I've I've explained that like pretty decently and when it comes to relationships it's about just trying to like, live in your heart like that's a whole other different story but check out some of my other videos and playlists below in the description or if you want life coaching like spiritual life health relationship and communication coaching with me just check me out below i love to work with people it's my passion and intention to help the world as much as i can this world and all the people so i'm not perfect i'm perfectly imperfect like everybody i don't pretend to know everything i make mistakes but at least have enough that i can share and learn a decent amount with enough people like one to one or even on youtube sometimes so uh Living in the now has also got to do with like the gap, the spaciousness, the inner silence, the person, the being, the you, the awareness. That's not the thoughts. It's not the things you're aware of. And it's not the thoughts that you're aware of either. It's the gap. The gap. In between like between every word there's a silence behind every word there's a silence in between every sentence there's this, an awareness, a silence, a space loads of spiritual teachers talk about this so mindfulness, meditation or just this type of practice of being aware can help you to touch with this so it's good to get a little bit of this in your life for sure so before you react to someone having a fast paced argument I recommend one great way to avoid arguments is just to slow down just slow down and don't have a fast paced argument slow down and be super careful of your response super careful, connect with inner stillness and connect with your heart listen to your intonation and how you talk you can hear the way I'm talking now, yeah? it's a bit different, eh? it's not all stressed so try, try not live from your stressful reactions and just quieten up a little bit on the inside and be careful I'll put a video about arguments, two videos I've made about like avoiding and healing from arguments, okay? They're really good, really helpful. Ooh. And I, anyway, I better go, so I have to let go of this video and attachment, and I've finished it anyway, so. Part of living in the now is about 
don't have too many thoughts, which is an, it's an extreme or an imbalance. So quieten your mind sometimes and just relax. Love you everybody, have a beautiful day. Thanks for all your love and support. I'll see you again in another video, okay? Befriend me on Facebook and connect with me if you want and work with me. Take care. Bye. So, living in the now, also, it doesn't mean that you have to try and force all the time or struggle or strain to live in the now. It's not about that. It's about balance and harmony. So let the river flow and just chill out. Okay, so don't worry. There's also a time and a place to be more mindful and careful and aware, especially in times of challenge or emotional upset or hyperactivity of the mind. Similarly, there's a time just to relax and chill and don't worry about any of this sort of stuff. So there's a time to rest, there's a time to be active, there's a time to concentrate and there's a time to just cease concentrating or trying. There's a time to try, there's a time to do, there's a time to let go, not to try and do anything. So it's about partially knowing when to be careful and knowing when to not be careful. Knowing when to rest and knowing when to chill and relax. So don't worry everybody, you don't have to try too hard. Similarly, don't never try possibly, unless you feel like that's brilliant for you. So up to you, no rules. All right. So another part of living in the now is about not knowing. So being comfortable with not knowing and not knowing what's going to come next or what's going to happen and not knowing what might go away or come. So being okay with not knowing. And another huge part of this, in my opinion, is also trusting that the universe and your spirit guides and your angels will help you and always help to protect, guide and point you along a better path and always listen to your gut instinct or your inner heart, your inner knowing. So you trust in that so you can find your way and be guided and follow the signs and make good decisions for yourself. So it's okay. So one interesting and funny element of living in the now is almost a bit like living, a tangent at least, is like living in living in the week or living in the day or living in the month because we will have patterns in life and rhythms and cycles and then at other times we'll have just like lots of lots of like super change like and nothing really staying too much the same, a lot of change and movement. Um, so Part of living in the now is sort of accepting and allowing and realizing part of the the change that can happen in life, the what can go on in life, and the fact that it's again it ties back to impermanency, and that we will have rhythms and cycles and patterns, and we'll have things repeating themselves, and the other times we won't have too much repeating, so we could be stuck staying or like stuck here for a day, a week, a month. Or, or longer and then we know it'll change so we're going to have new chapters of our life new lessons new things and new people and new relationships new friends we'll have all sorts of things coming and going and some things reappearing again and part of the idea of like at least living in the now or if you want to call this living in the week or the month or living in the phase is to make peace and be okay with the phases of life and the different experiences that life has to offer you before you die and pass on into the spirit world again so that's pretty important to be honest also. It's not exactly living in the now, it's kind of like living in the, the section of your life, but also it helps you just to live in the now and to make peace and to honor and to learn from and to live in and express the now more also. So. <coughs> so Another big element or teaching or part of the idea of living in the now, which you can incorporate practically in your life sometimes in the sense of balance and happiness or harmony, is to do something without making it a means to an end. So <clears throat> it's not attached to the outcome. So for example, um, this ties in with the whole idea of mindfulness, Buddhist mindfulness, and the teachings of Eckhart Tolle, for example, of like doing something as never a means to an end, which he talks about also. So this, for example, you can be mindful and pay attention to your breathing, 
how it feels in and out. The lungs and chest going in and out, how it feels like. So it's becoming very sensually perceptive, aware, very sensually aware. Paying attention to the now a lot. You could listen to the sound of your voice if you're talking. Listen to the sound of someone else's voice if you're talking. Look very carefully at the patterns of a flower or a plant. Um, look at your scenery. Pay attention visually. Listen to sounds close by. Listen to sounds far away. It could mean, like, like Buddhists say, when you're walking, feel the walking. Like, when you're walking, touch, touch the earth. Like, pay attention to the footsteps, to how it feels in your legs. Um, Digger! Another example of, like, sensual perception is, like, looking up at the clouds, looking at the sky. Or smell, stop and smell the flowers. Literally stop somewhere and smell the flowers somewhere, you know? Um... Another example is like when you're washing your hands, which usually people are like rushing to the end point. Usually like people want to rush to the end point. You make a cup of tea and you just, you're in a fog and then finally you sit down and you're like, ah, oh, I'm paying attention again. So pay attention. Like, so pay attention to the, the actions along the journey instead of just the end point which you're trying to arrive at or the destination in your mind. Um, so like if you're washing your hands, like feel the water on your hands. Pay, pay close attention to washing your fingers um, that type of thing so this can be helpful for example if you're stressed or you find your mind is too hyperactive and it's something to do sometimes like I did it all the time nearly for like years like three to five hours a day you know it's just way too much but then I gave it up completely for years and years as well which you know I think it's better to have a balance just incorporate some of these things sometimes um, especially when you feel it's beneficial. Never force, but just don't totally forget also, you know, you know some, at least not for our years, so. Pretty funny, eh? So everyone, I hope this video has helped. And if anyone would like to befriend me on Facebook or learn more about me, my website is below. Or if anyone would like to work, um, spiritual life coaching, health, relationship and communication coaching with me, as well as my herb shop called Higher Self Herbs below. Please have a look in the links and I'd love to connect uh, with you. I hope you enjoyed the video as I said already and I look forward to hearing from you if I do. Many blessings. See you.